Hello and welcome to another edition of the First Baptist Church Midweek Podcast. Um, I am not Jerry Hendricks here today. I'm T. Hamilton filling in for Jerry. Uh, He is on sabbatical for the month of May and so you get to hang out with me for a little bit. This isn't a normal midweek podcast this week because uh, normally it's Jerry and I going back and forth and having our conversation together. But some things came up this week after the message, after the conversation in Sunday morning that I wanted to kind of address and flesh out a little bit. Next week, don't worry, I'll be back with a co-host and uh, be talking to you about that. And uh, there's several things we got planned that I'm excited about. Um, But for today, it's going to be just kind of a little bit shorter. Sunday, we talked about prayer. We started a series called And When We Pray, uh, excuse me, (laughs) And When You Pray. And we're looking at the model prayer that Jesus presents in the Sermon on the Mount. And so we talked about the, the warnings, the, the hazards of praying, the wrong way to pray. But then we also looked forward to the ways that we are encouraged to pray. Because Jesus expects us as disciples to pray. That that needs to be a part of our life. And I know that prayer seems, um, for me, sometimes unapproachable and sometimes um, a little bit scary. Um, just because you're talking to the one who created you. Uh, but I think there's things for us to learn along the way. And so we started our prayer journals together. Uh, we handed those after, out after worship with some ideas for the way to pray through May. And I hope that you're using those prayer journals. I was excited last night when I went to a softball game that I had two kids who came up to me and said, we want to tell you how we used our prayer journal this morning. And this is, a, I think, a sixth grader and then probably about a kindergarten or a first grader somewhere in there. And I was so excited to hear their stories and the excitement they had that they had taken their prayer journal home, uh, that through encouragement from their parents, they took it seriously and they've started diving into that. And they told me how they prayed for um, others this week uh, just through that, that one morning of using their prayer journal. And so if you made it to work safely or home from school safely, know that you had a child who was praying for you because that was one of their things that they wrote in their prayer journal was for God to protect those who travel to and from school and work this week. And so I was excited about that, that that's something that sometimes when you, when you give a a challenge or you give something like that out, that in the heat of the moment on a Sunday morning, it sounds like a great idea. But then on Monday, the world catches up with us. The chaos of the world catches up with us. And sometimes we don't do it. But I really do think that this is something that as a family, um, if you participate, if you, if you plug into you, if you lean into that, um, or as an individual, that God's going to change your life and how you pray and your experience with prayer. Um, and hopefully that journey that you're taking in prayer will be something that, that's a blessing that shapes you and changes you for the future. Maybe this becomes a lifelong habit for you. Uh, it's been something that I've enjoyed the last couple mornings, um, taking time to sit down, write down things, write down who I've prayed for, why I've prayed for them, what I'm praying for them. And then also to pray for the different things that come up in, uh, in, in my mind and just the different ways that God has for us to pray. So I know that some of us are uh, readers that we like to have a, a book to read or maybe we got several books running at the same time uh, like I do. Um, and there's a couple good books that I've used on prayer that have helped me in my prayer journey and I wanted to share with you today. The first one <coughs> is kind of, uh, for me, it's like, the book on prayer. It's by Richard Foster, and it's called Prayer, Finding the Heart's True Home. Um, And so what Richard Foster does in here is he decides to sit down and write a a text that refers to all the different ways that you see prayer in Scripture and the ways that we experience prayer. Uh, And by no means is this an exhaustive list of what he he pulls in, but he has uh, 21 chapters here of 21 different types of prayer Um, that he sees in the scriptures in ways that we can approach that in our own prayer journey. It's broken into three parts, moving inward, uh, moving upward, and moving outward. And he uses each chapter kind of expand on the different types of prayer that fit into those uh, three movements of prayer. And so uh, if there's one book that you're going to get, this is a great book to get, Richard Foster's book, uh, Prayer. Um, I just think it's one of the classics that that will really help transform your understanding of what prayer is. Because I feel like a lot of times in my own life, my prayers get focused, they get caught in a rut or in kind of that same motion uh, movement. And uh, maybe I focus too much on one thing or another and I miss out on the other opportunities of prayer that God has for me. Another book, and uh, this one might be a little bit more, um, 
well, I don't know what what to say, but uh, it's by Scott McKnight. It's called Praying with the Church, Following Jesus Daily, Hourly, and Today. Um, this is a good book because it, it talks about the different prayers that we pray together as a church. Sometimes we focus so much on the individual prayer life that we miss out that there is time and place for praying together as a church and that sometimes saying the prayers together in one voice um, is a more powerful worship experience than just having someone pray or um, just spending time in silent prayer. And so I know sometimes we think, well, prayer shouldn't be rigid, shouldn't be planned out, things like that. But actually some of the most beautiful prayers and, and most heartfelt prayers um, that I've heard or that I have actually done myself were ones that I sat down beforehand and I began to write out my prayer. Because in those moments, I can really think through the words that I'm saying and the reasons that I'm writing. Um, and then that, that written out prayer that I take with me, whether it's up to during a Sunday morning or it's a part of something that's going on in the community, I know that these words are intentional. They're not something that just came to me in the moment. They're something that, that I really uh, wanted to say to God uh, in that moment. And so some of the greatest prayers that I've heard, some of the ones that I participated in are those prayers that we say together uh, that come from the history of the church. And so Scott McKnight kind of works through that, talks about the different ways that we pray and the intentionality of prayer. Uh, great book also, Praying with the Church. So coming up this week, we're going to move into our second part of our series on prayer, um, when you pray. And we're going to be looking at the first part, the first couple of verses of the model prayer. I'm going to refer to the prayer that we use from the Sermon on the Mount as the model prayer. And this is just a personal preference for me. Uh, you might have heard it called the Lord's Prayer. Uh, personally, I look at the Lord's Prayer as his, uh, the prayer that Jesus prays in John, um, in John chapter 13 or 17. I'd have to go back to look. Uh, where he prays for his disciples, where he prays for the future, where he prays for us. And so I call that the Lord's Prayer. And then the Sermon on the Mount, I call it the Model Prayer because Jesus is creating a framework for us on how to pray and the ways that we should pray. So we're going to be looking at the first couple of verses. Um, if you were there Sunday morning and you got to see the bumper video, um, you got to see the kids saying the Model Prayer. And so we're going to be doing looking at the part that focuses on God and our relationship to God and uh, how sometimes we forget about that part in our prayers, that we become so focused on ourselves or on others that we miss out on what it means to pray and talk to God and to praise God for who God is and what God has done and to pray for God's will to be done and for his kingdom to come here. And so we're going to be focusing in that direction this Sunday, and I really hope that you will join us for that. Um, if nothing else, be there because you know your mom wants you to be there. It's Mother's Day this Sunday, and, uh, and your mom, there's nothing more she would want, I would think, than to go to church with her family uh, this Sunday. We will have a photo booth set up. Lisa's been working hard on that. It's set up there. Uh, we'll take pictures and, uh, of your family all in there. Their clothes that they've they've matched, I'm sure there's lots of people that do that. Um, and then we'll take pictures of that and we'll get those cleaned up and sent to you so that your mom has a great picture of your family together on Sunday morning at worship or uh, going to church. And so that'll be available this Sunday, and I'm excited about that. In two Sundays, we won't have a specific message from stage as far as the typical conversation, but our children will be leading us in worship. They've got a musical that they'll be... Uh, leading with and I'm excited about that. I love our the way our children's ministry is created and focused um, to allow kids to lead in worship. I think that's so important for us to do as a church to say that it's not just the professional's job, it's not just the paid staff's job to lead in worship, but there's opportunities um, for us all as ministers to, to lead in worship. And so we're gonna celebrate with our kids that day I invite you to be there for that too. It's going to be a great day of worship. It's going to be a great day where we support our children and cheer them on in a sense uh, because they are taking seriously what it means to, to be a part of worship and to lead in worship. So next two Sundays, I don't want you to miss. I hope you'll be there. If you didn't get a chance to get a prayer journal or this first time you've heard about it, maybe you weren't able to be there Sunday, we do have a couple extra. And so they're in the worship center foyer. You can grab one of those Sunday and take it. It's not like you're, you're behind or anything. You can catch up to where we are um, and be a part of this process of prayer and, and practicing the, the adventure, the journey of prayer with us. 
So I hope to see you this Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Um, hopefully you'll be able to be there live. If not, then make sure to catch us on Facebook or YouTube and be a part of worship together. Have a great week. See ya.